Hey guys, Alpe here. Today I'm gonna give you five mechanical jobs that even your grandma can do. And this is gonna apply to a multitude of different bikes. So like, subscribe, and enough with the chit chat. Let's get on it. The first mechanical job that anybody can do is clean and lubricate your chain. Now, this applies to pretty much all the bikes uh, I have in the garage and they are wildly different, different brands, different styles, but they all have a chain and all those chains need to, need to be lubricated uh, every once in a while so that they can work properly. There are a few bikes out there that do not need to have their chain lubricated, mostly because they do not have a chain. For example, Harley, Harley usually uses a belt driven system or some of the BMW where you actually have a drive shaft rather than a chain. How often you got to do this thing is going to wildly change depends on your riding style, where you ride and where you live. If you live where it rains a lot, obviously you're gonna have to do it more often. If you ride in the mud rather than the street, obviously you're gonna have to do it more often and so on. So, but what does it take to clean the chain and grease it up? It does not take much. The only thing you need is elbow grease and get down there and get doing it. Uh, the, literally, you do not even need mechanical tools. Uh, for a few years, I actually used one of those dishes brush where I could brush the, the chain and then loop it up. The only thing, really, the only thing you need to buy is chain lube. You can refer to the thousands of videos on YouTube that show you how to clean and lube your chain properly. It's best if you guys use my video on how to clean and lube the chain. I did one on the F800GS, but it is what it is. You guys do what you have to do. Job number two that anybody can do is changing the battery. Now, changing the battery might happen because the bike has been sitting for so long and the battery is so old that it's not going to hold the charge anymore. When it comes to the battery, it seems like a daunting task. You never know, but in reality, it's a very, very simple task. Most of the bikes have the battery under the seat. The reason why I'm in front of the F800GS is because on the F800GS, the battery is under here. So you actually have to remove a few pieces, but with a few torques, and a screwdriver, you can change the battery yourself. It's not that difficult. If you do need a reference, check the videos on my channel for the F800GS because when I changed the air filter, the battery is right there. When I added the USB port, I had to route those wires to the battery, so I had to access the battery. So take a look if you want a reference, but it's literally nothing major. It's literally something that your grandma can do. Job number three is removing the wheels. You might think, well, is that really a maintenance job? Actually, yes, and it's one of those jobs that can actually save you some money. Now, I'm not expecting anybody to replace the tires themselves. I mean, even if replacing the tires is not that difficult, it's more complicated than what grandma can do. But I'm talking about removing the wheels themselves. Now, how are you gonna save money by removing the wheels? Well, when you need to change the tires, if you drive your bike to whatever dealer or tire place, they're gonna charge you to remove the tires from the bike. So instead of charging you 20, 30 dollars to replace the tire itself, they're gonna charge you whatever hourly fee they have. And depending on how long it takes, it might be double what you were expecting to pay. Removing a wheel, putting in your car and driving it to the, to the place itself is going to save some money. Now, removing the wheel is fairly easy. Most bikes have the same system. If you do have sliders on the front axle, you're gonna have to remove them, obviously, but lose the axle nut, 
and then loosen up the pinch bolts up front over here all the bikes ever once you loosen that up you slide the axle rod out and the wheel will come out obviously now remember to prop the bike up otherwise you do that and the bike is gonna fall over but it's not that complicated in the case of the scrambler you have a single caliper therefore you can wiggle around in the case of the f800 gs you have and and the aprilia you have double calipers but you can actually move them aside you can move this aside and pull the wheel out really easy in the back is more of the same you take off the axle nut pull the chain off of the sprocket and then just roll it right out it's it's very simple if you do not touch the chain adjustment bolts you don't even have to mess with them just leave them alone leave it there and move on spot number four is brake pads now most bikes nowadays are gonna have brake pads some bikes might have brake shoes but those are few and far in between you might have a two caliper system you might have a single caliper system but it's all the same now when you need to replace the brake pads it's very very easy it's easier than it seems now we already talked about removing the wheel well guess what once you remove the wheel changing the brake pads is gonna be piece of cake usually the brake pads are held in place by a pin or a spring or a combination of the two changing the brake pads is one of those uh, routine maintenance job that need to be done therefore most of the calipers are designed to make this change very very easy so if you're fairly good at following instructions that is a job you can absolutely do yourself as you guys can see across all this bike one is a super naked one is an adventure bike one is uh, whatever the scrambler is but they all have the same system in some cases like in the case of the scrambler and the bmw it's actually the same caliper itself so the job is exactly the same on both bikes the last job on my list is going to be oil and filter change oil and filter change might be wildly different from bike to bike but it all comes down to one thing drain the oil out once the oil is drained out remove the oil filter slap in a new oil filter put brand new oil in the system and you are done that is one easy job now I've done oil changes to all those bikes. When it comes to the Yamaha over here, there are more oil draining ports than I've ever seen before. Three or four to be exact. And the oil filter is actually behind a cover. You gotta get in there. But it wasn't difficult at all. When it comes to most other bikes, like those three over here, you're gonna have a single drain plug at the bottom, a filler hole, and an oil filter. The oil filter position might change, but the concept is exactly the same. All, most of the oil filters screw in, most of the drain plugs are gonna be on the bottom of the bike, most of the filler plugs are gonna be on the side of the engine. And this is literally a job that if you follow the manufacturer instruction, you gonna have to do every 6,000 miles or less, depending on running conditions. Therefore, it's, it's a job that you might gonna have to do quite often. So it's best to know how to do it yourself and you're gonna save yourself a whole bunch of money. There is another job that I need to mention but it's not gonna be in one of those five simplest jobs you can do and that is changing the air filter. I'm not including changing the air filter into my list because sometimes changing the air filter can turn out to be a nightmare. Ask to all the people that try to change the filter on a scrambler and found out that the top bolt of the air box strips easy. So now you gotta remove somehow that bolt and do something to be able to put their box back together or for example when i had the indian scout if you want to remove the air box itself you got to take apart a piece of the frame so 
Changing the air filter might be a very, very simple job, like on a dirt bike, or might be a, a nightmare where you gotta lift the tank, remove parts here and there. So I'm not feeling that that's an appropriate job to put in the list of the, the five maintenance job that your grandma can do. So to sum it up, we talk about looping the chain, removing the wheels, changing brake pads, changing oil and filter, and replacing the battery. So if to those five you add changing the air filter and checking the fluid levels, well, guess what? You just did a service on your bike and you save a whole bunch of money on maintenance costs. So remember, as always, be good at following instructions. Check, recheck the torque specs of the stuff that you're doing. And from there on, it's all downhill. That is it for today. I hope this video gave you some motivation to start doing maintenance on your own bike. If it did, for anything I used for the maintenance I've done on those bikes, check the description down below for links. There are gonna be links for tools, parts, and there's gonna be video reference for pretty much most of the jobs I just nominated. Other than that, if you did like the video, like. If you love the video and for more great content, subscribe. Till then, dirt on, and I'll see you next time.